Okay, so let's go with micro policies. A great tip for you guys is just to use the extracts. A lot of what you would need, both the micro effects of something and the macro effects of something, you will find in the extracts no problem whatsoever. But let's just take a couple here. So micro policies and then exchange rate changes. So let's say you're discussing a given micro policy. It won't be generally micro policies. It will be a specific micro policy like price controls or indirect tax or something like that. Uh, but let's generalize and say, you know, micro policies, what general things can you look for? Well, for micro effects, obviously the impact on demand supply, right? So you draw a market, maybe shifting a supply curve, shifting a demand curve, depending on what the policy is. If it's an indirect tax, you'd shift supply to the left or supply upwards, right? Maybe it's a market failure diagram, NPC will shift upwards. Um, so simple there. Then the impact on price and quantity of that, so higher price, lower quantity. Simple stuff if it's a demand supply related micro effect there, the impact on price and quantity. And for evaluation, you might be questioning the elasticity of demand, uh, looking at the impact on producer revenues, for example, how a tax will burden producers and reduce their producer revenue. You can also look at consumer burdens, for example, of an indirect tax. Very, very simple idea here. You can look at the impact on consumer and producer surplus, for example, from a subsidy, for example, from a tax, minimum price, maximum price. Easy to do that for surpluses. You can bring in the idea of government failure, things like black markets, for example, from excessive regulation, as an example, um, from maximum prices being set, minimum prices being set, indirect taxes. So these are all classics you can talk about, really, micro effects when it comes to micro policies. Easy, easy stuff. You just need two of those for a micro policy related question. What about macro effects? Because it strikes you, doesn't it? Micro policy strikes you as well, micro effects, obvious. Well, there are also macro effects as well. The impact on government revenue. So, for example, a tax, an indirect tax, will generate government revenue. You can talk about the macro effect of that. Where could that be spent in the economy? Can that revenue be used to maybe help the NHS? Can it be used? to uh, help with education spending or infrastructure spending, it then could maybe become a supply side policy going forward, right? The government revenue generated there. Can certain micro policies actually worsen income inequality and therefore we lose a macro objective, take an indirect tax, take a minimum price, regressive policies here. The cost, yeah, a lot of these micro policies will have significant costs attached to them. Take subsidy, take regulation, admin enforcement, tradable permits, etc, etc. So anytime you can talk about the cost to the government. You can talk about the implications of this. Does this mean potentially austerity going forward if uh, national debts have run up too high, budget deficits become too high? You can talk about the macro implications of a micro policy generating too much cost. Very clever thing to look out for, for such a question, for example. And even the unintended consequences could actually be macro effects. For example, if excessive regulation, a micro policy, burdens firms so much their profitability takes a hit. Maybe investment will uh, be lessened as a result because of the hit to profitability. As a result, the productive capacity of the economy uh, will be restricted going forward. If these firms end up leaving the country because regulation is that tight, then again, it could be a hit to the productive capacity of the economy. It could mean less FDI coming in, again, restraining the productive capacity of the economy. So look for unintended consequences, but in terms of a macro effect. Very simple things to do here, a nice example of how to do it. What about for exchange rate changes? Well, for exchange rate changes, the natural place to go, isn't it, is macro. You think an exchange rate change, you think immediately macro. The link to aggregate demand in particular here, but also maybe to SRS uh, when we're talking about cost of production changes, so AS and AD. You link all of that to growth, to unemployment, to inflation, so very logical to go to these macro objectives with an exchange rate change, whether it's a strong exchange rate or a weak exchange rate. Of course, the link to the current account, to our trade performance, is very strong as well. So you think the macro effects are quite logical to go into, quite easy to go into, clear macro effects there. Micro effects, it doesn't maybe strike you as obvious, the micro effects, but when you think about it, very simple. Elasticity of demand for imports, elasticity of demand for exports. Well, that's a micro effect, isn't it? Absolutely, so you can bring in the elasticity of ideas here. You can also bring in the elasticity of supply, for example. You think a weak exchange rate, yeah, exports are cheap, demand for exports goes up, you sell more exports. What if the, um, um, the price elasticity of supply is price inelastic there? And then you're in trouble, aren't you? And you can't necessarily supply more. So that's a, a micro effect evaluation point right there. What about the impact on key stakeholders? So a weak exchange rate, making it more expensive to import, that can harm living standards for consumers in that country. You know? So look at the impact on key stakeholders there as well, a classic place to go for
uh, changes in exchange rates there, no problem whatsoever. So nice examples there for you to look at. Let's look at two more examples now. We'll look at uh, protectionist policies being adapted and we'll take a macro policy like fiscal policy too. Let's see how we can look at micro and macro effects for those two. Fiscal policy, the natural place to go to first is macro effects, isn't it, with fiscal policy? AS and AD, shifting AD of course, but also shifting LRS potentially, depending on the fiscal policy. Uh, the impact on growth as a result, unemployment, inflation, the impact on government finances, or all very logical and very obvious macro effects to go to, so that should be probably the first thing that comes into your head, the macro effects, easy. But also micro effects of fiscal policy, the impact on income inequality, for example, of austerity policies, contractionary fiscal policies, like increases to VAT, for example, like cuts to government spending on public transport, cuts to government spending on welfare. These would all worsen income inequality, micro effect you can consider there, burning the poor in particular. Incentives, incentives on individual workers, incentives for uh, individual corporations, businesses. Looking at that impact would be a micro effect. The key impact on different stakeholders, you know, would be a micro effect. So these are all things to consider on the micro side of fiscal policy, which would count as micro effects. If we look at protectionist policies, maybe the natural place to go is micro effects first. You look at the impact on individual workers who maybe are able to keep their jobs. The impact on both domestic producer revenues and foreign producer revenues. Clear micro effect there. Elasticity of demand and also elasticity of supply. How the impact of a tariff, for example, in reducing imports is dependent on both PD and PES. Micro effect. The impact on consumer and producer surpluses. Absolutely. Inefficiency of these policies. Any deadweight welfare losses from these policies. Absolute classic. And micro effects when it comes to protectionist policies, but also macro effects of protectionist policies. For example, inflationary side effects of tariffs, of quotas, for example, here. AS and AD, right? If protectionist policies help to reduce the expenditure on imports, maybe shifting aggregate demand to the right. Or maybe you talk about retaliation, the impact of retaliation, and therefore our export revenues in the medium term actually decreasing and AD shifting left. You know, clever. If you talk about tariffs, increasing costs of production for firms in the economy and SRA shifting left. Good AS and AD impacts there. Then the link to growth. Then the link to unemployment, you could say. Definite link to the current account position within the balance of payments. Definite macro effect there. The impact on government finances. You know, tariff raises revenue. That could be very useful for government finances, especially for developing countries. Whereas subsidies, so domestic subsidies as a protectionist policy, would be a cost to the government and can deteriorate government finances. The future implications of that you can talk about as a macro effect. So this is just an idea. Maybe when you're revising for paper three, you can do this. You know, pick a few classic ideas here and see, you know, what are the micro effects I can talk about? What are the macro effects? But remember, guys, the extract material will give you a lot of the micro and the macro effects for whatever you need to evaluate in your 25 marker. Go there so that even if you freeze in the exam, you can get both the micro and the macro effects and it will be absolutely fine. That covers this 25 marker. Hopefully now you can nail it. Go out there and smash it, practice it, specialise in it for your paper three and you'll be absolutely fine. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you all later.